This is Ty Cats Today. Yes, it is Ty Cats Today for a Thursday, August the 26th, 2021. It's your digital host, Louis B. And apparently it's International Dog Day. I know this is Ty Cats Today, but uh, shout out to Bailey the dog. Uh, she is my, uh, my parents' um, foxhound. And we got her three years ago last week, this week. Um, so shout out to Bailey on International Dog Day. Um, wanted to get that in there. Uh, Ty Cats, of course, getting set to take on the Alouettes in Montreal tomorrow night. We'll have the pregame, Tiger Cats pregame, starting at 6.30. Andy Fantuz and myself getting you set for the game. Then we'll hand it off to RJ and Luke, who will have the call. And uh, by the way, RJ and Luke, they got a brand new episode of Tight Cats this week, dropping today, probably already. Uh, so wherever you get this podcast, make sure to check them out as they get you set for tomorrow night's game. Coming up on this show, we'll run through the depth chart released by the Tight Cats today. A couple of highlights we'll, we'll key into. Uh, we're going to hear from a couple of guys with some Montreal connections. Uh, Siante Evans. Uh, played, I believe, 13, 14 games with the Alouettes back in 2019. And Sean Thomas Erlington is going back home. Uh, he is a native of Montreal, and uh, we'll talk to him about getting to play in front of his friends and family in Montreal this weekend. Uh, we'll hear a bit more from Dane Evans as he spoke yesterday. I uh, wanted to get that chat in with Milty, so uh, we'll hear a bit more from Dane Evans um, on what he has to say heading into his first start of the season. And speaking of Luke Tasker, I mentioned that uh, he dropped a new episode of Tie Cats this week. Of course, he's got the Coach O show. He's got Task and Twos. Uh, and he's making time to join me today as well for a couple of minutes uh, at the end of the show. So jam-packed show. Let's get right into it. And let's start with this Hamilton Tiger Cats depth chart released today. And uh, some, some, some good news. Some good news. Um, is that uh, Tunde Adelike and Carriel Brooks will make their season debut. Uh, Adelike lined up at the free safety. Carriel Brooks lined up at halfback. Uh, and then Jamal Roll. Going left to right, Jamal Roll, Carriel Brooks, Tunde Adelike, Siante Evans, and Frankie Williams. So a, a secondary that's already been uh, very good, uh, getting even better with the readdition of Carriel Brooks and Tunde Adelike. Uh, in the middle, on defense, no changes. Third week in a row, we're seeing this. Simone Lawrence, weak side linebacker. Jovan Santos, Knox, middle linebacker. And Cameron Kelly on the, uh, the, the short side there, the Sam linebacker. And then up front, a couple of changes. Coach O mentioned it yesterday. Ja'Garrett Davis is uh, not available after unknowingly breaking some COVID protocols. So r- lining up left to right. Up front, you got Julian House there, moving from strong side to weak side, uh, line or defensive end, and then you got Teddy Laurent back in the starting lineup. Eddie Wilson the second, making a third straight start, and uh, Carney on the Malik Carney on the uh, the strong side defensive end spot. So that is the defense. That's how the Tie Cats will line up against Vernon Adams Jr. and the Montreal Alouettes offense tomorrow night. Let's go to. The offense, because again, a couple of changes up front, starting with the offensive line. It's been a big topic of the conversation the last couple of weeks for the Ticats, but still trying to find the uh, the connections here um, to make it work. Left to right, you got Okafor, Revenberg, Sirocco, John Yarbrough getting the start at right guard and making his uh, season debut, Jordan Murray making the start at right tackle. So you actually have to go back to week five of 2019. The Ticats didn't have four Canadian offensive linemen uh, in the lineup. So there you go. Uh, Some changes there. Uh, Also some changes at the receiving for the Ticats. Uh, Dunbar Jr. getting into the lineup. Back, uh, he's lining up on the uh, left side wide. And Jalen Acklin moving from wide to slot back. So there you go. Jalen Acklin moving from that wide side left spot uh, into slot back. Uh, and then the receivers the rest of the way. Tim White getting another start. Speedy B in his regular spot. And Ungerer the third making his uh, third straight start at that uh, wide receiver position. Uh, you got Dane Evans. We heard Coach O announce yesterday. Dane Evans getting the start. Lining up behind him. Thomas Erlington and Nikola Kalinich. And rounding out the depth chart. 
Good St. Catherine's boy. Damagala. Michael Damagala getting his first career CFL appearance. He'll be the kicker. Joel Whitford back as the punter. Uh, Gordon White, long snapper, and Frankie Williams, Brandon Banks at the uh, kick returner and punt returner position. So there you go. Of course, the depth chart available at tycats.ca, or you can get it at, uh, on Twitter. But just highlighting a couple of changes. Uh, you got the one-game injured list, Mike Daly. We saw him go out uh, in, uh, in week two in Saskatchewan. He's on the one-game injured list. Dylan Wynn's still out. Channing Stribling on the one-game injured list. Don Jackson and Jake Burt. Uh, maybe a bigger story, maybe flying under the radar, but Chris Van Zyl has been placed on the six-game injured list. So has Lorenzo Malden the fourth. So um, that's, that's not great to see, of course, when uh, you know Van Zyl missed the first week. Came back for week two, uh, got out, but now he's on the six-game injured list. So, uh, some some interesting notes on that one. All right, let's uh, let's hear from a couple of guys with some Montreal connections, and uh, let's start with Siante Evans. He played a couple of games uh, with the Alouettes in 2019, and was just curious as to whether or not uh, he had any extra motivation heading into a game like this. Um. I don't really have much feelings. Um, treating it like a, you know, it's a game. You know, it's another opportunity for me to play a game and you know, come out victorious. I mean, it's great. You know, we get veteran guys back, um, guys who've been here. You know, in the program with Hamilton. You know, been playing under this system for the past couple of years. So it's great. You know, just to be able to have you know accountability partners somebody who's going to hold you accountable and just be able to, you know, try to develop some chemistry moving forward. Thanks, Siante. Um, Yeah, absolutely. It all starts with the quarterback and, you know, they have a very good athletic quarterback, you know, a guy who wants to extend plays, make plays with his feet, but, you know, also wants to extend it with his arm too. You know, he trusts his receivers. You know, they got a good group of receivers from, you know, one through five. So I know those guys are going to get you know, target, you know, targets. So as far as our secondary and our guys, we just have to make sure that, you know, we're on the body, you know, on the man, make sure we're manning up and finishing plays, you know, make sure we're finishing, you know, with the ball on the ground or in our hands. Right. Yeah, that's his um, MO, you know, and I don't think he's going to shy away from it. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that that's a big emphasis this week is, and it's every week, you know, trying to, Make sure we do it as best as possible to, you know, make our plays come down with, you know, the turnovers or the interceptions, whatever it is. Make sure that we come down with it and finish. That's why I said earlier, just make sure yeah. we're finishing our plays. That is Siante Evans as he spoke this week and making his return to Montreal for the first time uh, since signing with the uh, Ticats in the off season, and uh, you know that Ticats defense ready to make a, a big play. They want to make the big play. Uh, zero interceptions so far this season, so uh, they're looking to make some uh, takeaways. Win the turnover battle has been a key point for this Ticats team. Haven't been able to do it the first two weeks. Uh, another man with a, uh, a really big Montreal connection is uh, Sean Thomas Erlington. Of course, he was born and raised in Montreal, and uh, he's someone who is very, very excited about getting to play in front of his friends and family. Obviously, it's, it's very exciting to be back in, be back in town, see the family, uh, having them come to the game, and I guess for, for this year, just at least see them in the stands, right? I mean, we prepare like we've been preparing for the past weeks, uh, obviously working extra hard uh since since we're 0 two but it doesn't change like how we approach these these games every game is important we need to go in and 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 do our best and that's not what we've been doing in the past week and we'll, we'll get it done this week obviously i think even on the outside look as much as an inside look we just need to protect our quarterback right mm -hmm. so we we've been practicing preparate uh, our preparation has been has been high on protection uh in, in the past week and as it's been in the past week we just Having, uh, like you said, like little issues here and there, but we, we, we got this thing uh, fixed up. Okay. You, th you think you've got it fixed now? Yeah. Okay. I see, I see a good defense. I, th I, see, it, I see a defense that we could uh, definitely score some points on at, at the same time. It's all about uh, working what, we, uh, what we've been working on all week and just executing. 
That is Sean Thomas Erlington, who will no doubt have uh, some faithful friends and family wearing the black and gold at uh, Molson Percival Stadium uh, tomorrow night. And a uh, great guy and looking forward to him. And again, someone else who is uh, ready for a big breakout performance. Wanted to get to this. Uh, of course, we heard yesterday, we got the news that Dane Evans will start in place of an injured Jeremiah Masoli, who's been uh, dealing with some some rib issues uh, the last week or so, a couple of weeks, I guess, according to Coach, uh, happened in that Saskatchewan game. So uh, Dane Evans getting the start, and Dane Evans likes playing in Montreal. He got his first career CFL start in Montreal. He got his uh, first career CFL touchdown in Montreal, and uh, in 2019, had his best game of the season in Montreal, where he threw for 379 yards and a career-best four touchdowns. So, Dane, you excited about getting to play in Montreal? Uh, and when I got my first start, that was kind of, you know, the game before playoffs, and all the seeds were secure. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it didn't really matter for the records. It, it mattered for me because it was my first start. But, um, yeah, it's just kind of a funny thing that keeps happening. Um, and uh, like I just told Shinetti, um, this is the best Montreal team we that I've played. So I'm looking forward to it, man. I think it's going to be a battle. Um, I love the way VA plays. They got a great defense. And right now, I mean, their special teams is, is killing too. So it'll be a fun one for us. I'm looking forward to it. And then, and just to add on to that, I love that stadium, man. It's just a cool little, it's a cool stadium. It's uniquely Canadian and it, it's just cool. If we make it a big deal, it is, but I mean, we're not, we're not a, panic bunch of people around here you know we know what the end goal is we know what we got to do to get there we know we need to be better don't get me wrong um but i think we put the work in and you know we're we're ready for it we're we're excited to go um well i mean you know we just got to get some things right on the protection aspect which the guys have been doing this week um i'm telling you man i wish y'all could uh be up here and see how much how many hours sirocco and the boys put in on the protections i'm that they're doing their job the the time is going to come and uh, really, man, it's it's just we just got to work as a team. It takes everybody. It takes the receivers going the right depth, takes the other line blocking the right guys and takes me or the whoever the quarterback is, you know, doing what we need to do, too. So it, it is kind of unfair to put it all on the o line. I know when you're just watching it, it's easy to see that and say, oh, he needs to block him. But there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. And uh, our guys, our guys are working, man. Don't get me wrong. They're we're, we're getting better. Just yeah, I mean, I think I think. You, I mean, y'all know, Tommy, we're going to do whatever's open, right? So yeah. if they're loading the box, then there's no reason to pound our head in against the wall and just keep trying to run in there. We'll start slinging it. But if they spread out, then obviously Tommy's a great OC and we're going to start running the ball. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, like I've been telling everybody, we're not in panic mode by any means. We know we need to be better. And uh, I think we will be this week. That is Dane Evans, of course, the starting quarterback for the Ticats. And uh, I mentioned a couple other changes on the, the depth chart that kind of jumped out to me at, uh, the, for the Ticats. And one of them was Jalen Acklin moving from uh, the wide side to the slot back position. Wide receiver to slot back. And I, I wanted to get some interesting perspective on this. And I thought, who better to ask than... The busiest man on the Ticats audio network in Luke Tasker. Of course, you can hear him on the broadcast tomorrow night with RJ Broadhead. You can hear him on the Coach O Show. You can hear him on Task and Twos on Ticats this week. So, Luke, thank you for doing this. And just give me some perspective. Why would you make that move from wide receiver to slot back? I 100% think... It's about a trust thing with Tommy. So I would I would really guess that Acklin mentally and conceptually has an understanding better of both sides he can play either kind of thing and i'm talking mentally physically i really i actually don't think that it would be a physical thing it may be that there are some routes that they want Acklin quicker to, to do this from the slot again it's more of a trust thing and an understanding conceptually than it is a physical thing so the young player they're putting him outside in my opinion because because they know that he knows that, yeah. and and they feel confident that Ackland can can conceptually get get either one of them. I really would think it's that rather than a physical uh, skill set thing. So I mean, is that is that the benefit of? Because uh, I was talking about this that I I feel like Ackland and Dane probably have more chemistry, just based on you know what they did together in the back half of last season. I feel like is that. Yeah. 
I mean, I know Dane didn't really get first team reps after camp, but is that something that Tommy might look to get to like early? Like, was that something? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I don't know if it would be something that Dane uh, or Soli, you know, however that the room is we're operating, if it would be something that they have a say in. But I do think that Dane probably has a, a pretty good comfort level with Ackland by, by now. And that's a big thing for a quarterback. Like, if you know, if you know what you know about a player, that that kind of that kind of helps, uh, you know, as the game goes along to know where things are going to be. Um, generally, that position, that W position, where Acklin is, is lined up right now, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, sort of reads and figure it out as you go that happens at the, from that position. X sometimes X you could you could argue is maybe more you hear the play and what you're doing is is set in stone, you know, and, not, and there's reads and things you have to do out there, but that W positions moving around has to see a lot more, I would say, than the X position. All right. My thanks to uh, Luke Tasker for giving me uh, some time on that one. Thank you, Luke. And uh, my thanks to you for tuning in. Of course, jam-packed show. It's usually how it goes the closer we get to, uh, to game day and game day just a few short hours away, depending on when you're listening to this. But uh, looking forward to it, of course. Make sure to join us on the Ticats Audio Network starting at 6.30. Tiger Cats pregame presented by Active Green and Ross. Andy Fantuz and I will get you set. And then we'll hand it over to RJ and Luke with the call from the action in Montreal. So looking forward to uh, to a great day tomorrow. You might be able to join us on a special Tide Cats today. And uh, hopefully, you know, you tune in, you like, subscribe, and make sure you never miss an episode. Thanks for listening. For the Tide Cats Audio Network, I'm Louis B. Hoping you have a great day.